Hi, my name's John. Welcome to the first part in what's going to be a series of videos on installing a digital readout on this Harrison 140 lathe. I've just bought this lathe. It's a metric lathe. It's in very good condition. A lot of my work is done in imperial. The easiest way to do imperial work on a metric machine is to fit it to the arrow. The lathe is going to go against that wall there. Before I finally install the lathe in its position where it's going to be stopping, I pull the lathe out from the wall so I can get behind it to install the long scale on the back of the lathe. Once the long scale is installed, I can push the lathe back and I can work on the cross side axis quite easily. After having a good look around on the internet, I eventually bought a DRO kit of a company called AMS International. I rang them up and I told them what lathe I had, Harrison 140. And they knew what scales I would need because I've sold them before for that particular lathe. So they've sent the two scales, the short one and the long one. Obviously, the display, the reed heads, there's a mountain bracket there for the display, and there's a lot of brackets and fitting kits, bits and pieces that you'll need to mount the various components. When you look at them, you can tell that they're actually machined, they're not just die cast bits of aluminium that certainly appear to be quality stuff. There's also a little torch comes with it. Very handy. Okay, so what we'll do, we'll fit the, the long one first, then I can get the lathe back into, into position. That's a protective cover just to keep the, any coolant of it. The actual scale itself. Obviously you mounted that with ups any water runs off it, not up through the seal. We'll have a look at the back of the lathe and see what provisions are off for mounting it. I know there is quite a few holes in the back of the lathe and the back of the lathe bed is nice and flat so I shouldn't have too many problems mounting this one. It's going to be the cross slide one that's going to be interesting. That's the one where we're going to have to make brackets and fabricate bits and pieces to make it fit. Right, I've moved the carriage all the way up as far as it could possibly move it and you had a face plate on and you are skimming something on a face plate. Obviously it can't come any further back than the tail stock. Which gives a load of room for, for screw up the mount with, with scale. It always screws that way around with the wire pointing towards the front. Probably something like that. Just mounted on two bolts with packing pieces behind to get it level. The holes are slotted so you can get it level that way. We'll probably end up putting a clock gauge on the carriage to wind it back and forward to get the alignment good. There's plenty of holes in here. Or we'll be able to mount a bracket that holds a reed head. It's simple enough to drill extra holes in as well. It's cast iron, it's nice and soft. So the first thing I want to do is mount mount the scale probably down there like that. There's one hole there, but it's the wrong size, so we'll we'll redrill it. Those three holes, well it's these series of holes are for a, a tape or turn attachment that I haven't got and I'm not likely to get. So what I'll probably do is use the bottom of those holes just as a, a point to line that up on to get it mounted and get it accurately squared up. The smarty chain so no, oh good. I'll wind the carriage all the way back to that end and then we'll have a look at this end just to make sure. The reed head is going to be mounted off here. So it gives us plenty there and plenty at the front. So what I need to do is scrape the, scrape the paint off this area so I don't have the 
casting of the, the lathe because that's there's a lot of filler on there. I'll make a little drill jig so I can get the drill nice and square, nice and straight. See there's a lot of there's a lot of paint and filler on here. Because I actually care about the, the finish on the layers when they built them in these days. Quite a nice scrape, that's been made from an old file, carbide tips being braced on. That was a, a car boot sale find. So we need to mark a hole, mark a hole, drill on top of a hole in this end first. Just colour it in with a, a felt tip pen. Just so we can see the mark. Scale in place, that's where it's going to be going. I've got a transfer punch here, so I can just scrape a line with a transfer punch to fall into the slot as well. We want to be in the center of that slot as well. Right, so we want the hole drilling and tapping in there. This is a, a drill guide. It's simply a piece of piece of piece of steel with two holes drilled in. One's 4.2 for the tapping drill, and one's 5 mil for a clearance drill. So all we can do, put that through there into our hole. And if we clamp that onto there with the J clamp and drill that hole, we've got to be square and straight to the job because that's where the hole is going to guide it. I'm just going to start the drill on the pop mark. Right, we'll put our top and drill in the little start our pen as well. And we need to clamp this into position. Right, last bit of metal is touching. solid on the bed and it's actually you can feel the hole there so we drill that drill that now that drill has got to follow that hole which is in line a little bit of cut and paste and so that blocks hole in the drill nice and square That's about 10 mil thick, that's more than enough for what it's got to do. Here we've got a, a 5 mil tap, and that goes through the 5 mil clearance hole. Starts into there, and we'll, we can hold that, and that's going to keep the tap nice and straight to brand new tap so it's cutting. Nice and easy, it's just soft cast iron, the, the casting. So that's our first hole, drilled and tapped. But we'll mount the scale now on the one and then line it up and get the other one marked off. I'm going to put a couple of washers behind here just to pack it out temporarily to take up the thickness of the paint. I'll put it in the centre of the, the slot and we've got to just move it up and down. Right, so now we need to ensure that this is running parallel to that. I'll put a clock here, John, there. 
Now we're going to drill the top the other end and check it for line up. Zero o'clock gauge at the end. So this end needs to come down. I've got a little screw jack just to just to hold it. Yeah, we're gonna try that. Right, that's good, it's never moved. Just make sure we're all getting it through. Control reading. Zero there. Zero there. Okay, so I can mark the person in that hole in the centre of the slot. You can see there, I've used a little jack just to hold it in the centre, just to lift the end up. I want to go right in the centre of that slot with a Five mil transfer punch. Right, I've fastened it on with one, one spacer washer between each bolt. You can see how much tolerance there is on the hole so you can basically put it anywhere you want. Same at that end. Okay, so and just the height at each end, easily with the slotted holes, and then spacers behind to bring each end out. What we'll do now, we'll measure this face and make sure it's lying parallel. Put a clock gauge motor on the front face of the scale. Right, it's actually higher, I'm sticking out through that this end, so I need another spacer putting under there. That's within within twenty thousandths end to end. Actually, I want a slightly thinner wash out in this end. Right, that's within three thousandths end to end. Right, so from this end to this end is three thousandths. That end is further out 3 thousandths than that end, which is nothing, it's well within the tolerances. What we need to do now is set the height of it. Right, this time we're going to measure the height of the bar. That's within 5 thou. It's actually five thou low at this end, we might as well get it right because this is an easy adjustment. You split the difference. That's within three thou as well, so the scale's well within the accuracy requirements. 
I can pretty wrong and get it absolutely spot on, but that is very, very good.